you and let's debug for real. Thanks. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so, yeah, this is Let's Debug for Real. I'm calling this part two in the Braver, Faster, Better series that I just made up because I figured this kind of relates to what I talked about at uh, LA WordCamp. Mike's not on? Well, uh, we have two choices. Talk louder or turn the thing on. How about now? Yeah. That's it. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. So. Let's debug for real. Uh, I talked at uh, WordCamp LA last fall about using version control. And I feel like using a debugger kind of falls under the same umbrella of things that you can do to maybe put in a little extra work at the beginning, but to make your life easier over time. So let's get rolling with this. Uh, just so you know, the slides are available. I tweeted out the link uh, if you don't want to try and type this out. But the, you can view the slides on shooflydesign.org. And you can get the slides on GitHub. And if you, f if you follow Shoefly Design on Twitter, um, the link is also there. Well, you don't have to follow it. It's just there. But you can also follow it. OK, so who am I? Uh, my name is Joe Chelman. I'm a freelance web developer. I've been doing this for quite some time. I've been using WordPress for a really long time, since uh, even before it was called WordPress. And um, I'm an, an occasional uh, contributor. I'm a co-organizer of the Advanced WordPress Meetup Group in LA, which is a uh, meeting later this month, if you're, in, if you're into that. I'm also an author with uh, lynda.com and a book author with PeachBit. I wear many hats. Um, so who are you, uh, and why are you here? I'm t so my assumption is that you are any or all of the following. You might be a theme author, or somebody who just kind of tinkers around with themes. You might be someone who writes or tinkers with plugins. Or you might be somebody who's just curious about how WordPress works. So using, uh, learning how to use a debugger will help you with any or all of those things. And uh, we'll see how that works uh, a little bit later. So what is a debugger, and why do I need one? Why do you need one? Why does anybody need one? OK, so for our purposes, we're talking about WordPress. So we're going to be talking about debuggers that work with PHP, the programming language that WordPress is written in, and then JavaScript also to an extent. Uh, today, it's mostly going to be PHP. But these principles, once you learn how to use a debugger, they pretty much all, this, all work the same way, regardless of the, program, uh, the programming language. So once you learn how to use one in PHP, you can pretty much, like if you switched over to doing app development, it's basically the same tools. And the user interfaces tend to be the same. So this is very transferable knowledge. So, the goal here is to achieve a zen-like calm. <laughs> I'm overselling that just slightly. Uh, the, but the, the idea is that by learning how to use a debugger, you enhance your knowledge of what's happening, and you can solve problems faster, and you get much less frustrated. This is what we hope. Uh, we'll see if it works. So what is a debugger? Uh, a debugger, it's software that lets you inspect what's happening in other software in real time as that software runs. Um, so basically, it just helps you find bugs and get rid of them. That's why it's called a debugger. So if you are not using a debugger and you're trying to figure out what's going on in your themes, your plugins, or whatever, here are the tools that you might be using now. Or if you're not using them, uh, you, uh, you might, this might be good to know, too. So uh, there is, in the wp-config file, a constant called wp underscore debug. It's in, if you just open the wp-config file, it's down there toward the bottom. And, it's, and as distributed by, uh, by, from WordPress.org, it's set to false, which is good. Because if you ever turn it on, you're going to see, odds are you're going to see a ton of error messages and like weird notices and stuff like that, uh, which could be coming from plugins or themes that you're running. Or depending on your setup, you could just see a whole bunch of messages. So turning it off when your site is live on the internet is good. You want to do that. But when you're trying to figure out what's going wrong, turning the, setting that to true is good, because you get all those messages. Likewise, uh, if you're a PHP person, you may have seen this function called error underscore reporting, which you can set to a variety of constants in these all caps and underscores. And if you set it to this in particular, uh, that is another way to get a whole ton of error messages. 
Likewise, there are PHP functions. There's print underscore r or var dump, um, which you can feed a variable to, and they will give you all kinds of information about what that variable contains at the time when you run it. And if you're working in JavaScript, we have console functions. So uh, the console global object is something that runs in the browser that you're using, and then you can use the log method to dump out the contents of a variable. And there's also console.dir, which will give you a sort of outline view of the same thing. So these are all tools that you have available without having to do anything else. You can just kind of uh, stick them in your code, and it'll work. Oh, whoops, there's one more thing. Yes, so with a debugger, you get all of those things. You don't have to, just because you've learned how to use a debugger, that uh, does not mean that you have to get rid of all that stuff. Um, and oftentimes, you will still use all those techniques. But you get all of that stuff, plus you can uh, pause or continue the execution of your code at any point while it's running. Um, and if this doesn't necessarily, I, I keep thinking like this thing's falling off. Can you still hear me when, uh, when I'm not adjusting it? All right, good. Um, being able to stop and run your code as it's doing stuff is really excellent. And uh, we'll, there's going to be a little demo that shows how this works. Um, it's really sweet. When you pause your code, you can also step through it line by line uh, in different sort of uh, levels of, ab of abstraction. So you can step just through the file that you're looking at. You can step into functions. You can step out of functions and do all kinds of stuff like that. You can see all currently defined variables, not just the one that you're trying to look at with your print var um, thing. You can see everything that PHP knows about at the specific time that you're executing a specific thing. You can also inspect the value of any variable over time and watch it change. So all this stuff is really neat. And if you've never seen it before, I, I think you're also going to think it's pretty neat. So overall, you end up with much less guessing about what the frig is going on at any point. <laughs> um, and this, this is the goal. Like, you, you don't, you don't want to you, you reduce the amount of head scratching as much as possible. And uh, you know, stop having so many face prints on your desk. <laughs> so uh, jargon. I cover a few kinds of terms that you experience when you work with this kind of software. Um, one is IDE, that is an integrated development environment. This is a kind of software that basically will package up everything that you need to do when you're writing code in one unit. Uh, we'll be looking at what some examples are a little later. Um, breakpoint. So in responsive design, we have breakpoints that determine things like how wide is the browser. OK, here are the, here are the breakpoints, the widths at which I'm going to change something. In terms of debugging, a breakpoint is a point in the code when you want to stop, collaborate, and listen. No. Uh, you want to stop and see what's happening at that point. There's also stepping, which I, I mentioned a little bit. There's uh, pretty much every debugger will have step into, step out, step over. And these are ways to proceed through your code when execution is paused. There's a notion of a watch does not mean the kind you wear on your wrist. It means I want to watch a particular variable or possibly an expression, something like that, and just have it someplace where it's always there where I can keep an eye on it and see what happens to it. And then finally, uh, the call stack. I don't know if you've heard of this before, but basically this is uh, the sequence of function calls that have caused you to get to the point where you're at. Um, I have to say, in my own experience, this is something I don't use quite so much as the other features, but it is something that pretty much every debugger will give you. And it's good to know what it is. OK, so you need software to be able to do this. So let's go over what some of those things are. Um, for PHP, today we're going to be using Xdebug. But you basically need some kind of, th this is the actual debugger. Like the, um, every programming language will have a series of debuggers that you can run for that particular language. And the most popular one for PHP at the moment is Xdebug. There's also, as of PHP 5.6, a PHP DBG. It's built into the language. It is a command line tool. Uh, works a little bit differently from Xdebug, which kind of inserts itself and intercepts every line as it runs. So uh, Xdebug is not something you would ever want to run on a production server, because it slows things way down. Um, of course, with the benefit of being able to see what's going on. 
But PHP DBG is a new tool in PHP 5.6. So those of you that are into the command line, uh, anybody in here into the command line? Awesome. Uh, yeah, you can check that out. It's, uh, and if you're running PHP 5.6, which is still kind of being adopted. OK, so then you need software to actually run your whole stack, um, by which I mean your web server, your database, all that stuff. So a very popular one and uh, a sponsor of this very camp, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, ServerPress's, project, uh, ServerPress's product, Desktop Server. Uh, it's very nice. And uh, there's a free version and a version that you can pay them for, for their hard work. Uh, there's also MAMP, which is the one that I happen to use because I'm a dilettante and I don't just do WordPress stuff. Um, so I've been using it forever, and I just can't give it up. What are you going to do? Uh, again, there's a free version and a version that you can pay for. We're not ready for the demo yet. Come on. All right. Uh, some other pieces that you will likely want are browser extensions. Uh, these are available for pretty much any browser that you want to use. Um, and when I say any browser you want to use, I don't know that there's one available for IE, but for uh, <laughs> uh, so you know, just leave that. Uh, these make the, uh, making the connection between your IDE and Xdebug running on PHP is one of the friction points that makes using a debugger a real pain in the rear end, uh, in my experience. And so using one of these browser extensions can make that a lot easier. So for Chrome, there's one called Xdebug Helper, which is the one we'll be looking at today. There's also Easiest Xdebug for Firefox and the Xdebug Toggler for Safari. Um, all of these basically do the same thing. They just make it easy to make sure that your browser is listening and communicating with Xdebug so that when you're actually trying to do stuff, it will work. OK, so IDEs. Uh, you do not have to use an IDE to use a debugger. Um, however, it is really nice when you do. And there are a few reasons for that, um, which we'll go over. But some of the examples of IDEs that are available, uh, PHP Storm is a very popular one. It's the one that I am currently using. It is a paid piece of software. Um, there is a free trial that is extremely generous, I think. Um, there's a month-long trial for any released version. And when they do their uh, beta releases, which they call their early access program, there's a free trial for that as well. So it's, they're separate installs. And basically, I mean, I've been using PHP Storm now for at least a couple of months. And I, I still haven't paid for it, because I haven't had to, because I've been you know, testing it out. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I'm submitting bugs and everything. Uh, there's also NetBeans, which is, comes from a, a sort of Java background, but it is also available for working with PHP stuff. It is completely free. Uh, there's also Eclipse, which I think might be uh, the code base that NetBeans kind of spawned from. Don't quote me on that. Uh, also free. Um, I was using NetBeans before I made the jump to PHP Storm. So reasons that an IDE is nice are, are things like, basically when you work with an IDE, you import your entire project in to the IDE. And so this means basically importing your entire WordPress site. Even if you're just working on a theme, you just import the whole thing. Get it all in there. And this means that the IDE can inspect the entire project and learn about everything that's in there. Uh, so that means you get things like really nice code completion. So if I start to write the name of a core WordPress function, it can complete it for you, tell you what all the parameters are in the right order, and, and what type of thing each parameter is. Uh, this is really nice and saves a lot of you know, round tripping over to the documentation because I know I can never remember what order anything goes in or what the names of a lot of functions are. So that's really nice. Um, it can help you avoid mistakes. So as you're writing, you don't have to go back into your browser and reload and suddenly find that there's an error. Most IDEs will warn you, hey, you, you're missing a semicolon here, and put a little underline under it or highlight it or something uh, before it even runs. So uh, things like that are really nice. You also get full navigation throughout the project. So with any function definition, you can say, all right, I just wrote this, this thing. I, I just wrote a big function. It's using a bunch of core WordPress functions. Wait, where is that defined? And you can just click the name of a function, and it will open up the file where that function is defined and take you right to its definition. And then you can also say, all right, so I'm, I'm looking at a function. Where is it being used? Um, and you can, so you can go both ways. It's pretty, pretty cool. With some IDEs, you can debug your PHP and your JavaScript together in one environment. Uh, I have to admit, I don't use this a ton. But if you're working on something like a WordPress project that powers, say, an Angular 
Node.js front end or whatever. You can debug all that stuff in one, you know, integrated package. Hence, integrated development environment. Also, uh, you can get help when you're changing stuff. So if you rename a file, uh, an IDE can say, okay, you're renaming this file. You do realize that you might have told other files in your project that that thing is there and, you, and you, you, uh, you're now gonna need to go back and find those. Do you want me to find them for you and help you uh, rename those? And you could say, oh yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, it's really helpful. So uh, those are some of the things that an IDE will give you if you start using one. You don't have to use an IDE and here are some uh, plugins that will help you if you, use, uh, if, you, if you don't use an IDE. So Sublime Text is uh, pretty much everybody's friend and there is an xdebug package for Sublime Text. If you wanna go really sort of bare bones, um, if you use a Mac, there's a, a standalone application called Mac GDB, uh, G -B, I think that's supposed to be GDBP. Uh, I don't know who wrote this. <laughs> it's hard to find good help these days. Um, it's called MacGDBP, and uh, it's a standalone Xdebug client that will let you uh, do a lot of the same stuff that an IDE does, but maintain your own text editor. Honestly, it, you, you have to be really tied to your editor to want to use something like that, but it is there. Uh, I recommend using an IDE. Okay, so for JavaScript, there are debugging tools built right into most browsers. You have the Chrome developer tools, which are built into Chrome. Some of the things that you might not be aware of is that there is such a thing as remote debugging. So if you're working on an Android app or if you're working on, a, on your website on an Android device or an Android simulator, you can connect the Chrome developer tools to that and they will talk to each other. That's called remote debugging and there's a remote debugging for Android package you can get. If you like using Chrome and you wanna do the same thing with iOS devices, there is a project called the iOS WebKit Debug Proxy. So you can check that out. If you use Firefox, everybody's friend is Firebug. And Safari has its own web inspector with its own development tools built in as well. With Xcode and the iOS simulator, you can connect very easily to either the simulator or an actual device if you've plugged it in by USB and do your, uh, do your JavaScript debugging that way. And hey, if you use Internet Explorer, you have the F12 development tools. Also has a debugger built in. Let's see, I think that's, it. that's everything. So, all right, it's, uh, it's time to actually do a little bit of demo stuff. So, just to set some context, my setup is I'm using the PHP Storm 9 uh, EAP version. The current release version of PHP Storm is version eight, but they also have this early access program where you can go get the next release as they're working on it. Uh, and usually it's quite stable and very nice. Um, and they appreciate, you know, bug reports and all that. The stack I'm using is MAMP Pro, so that's my Apache MySQL and PHP setup. And then the browser I'm using for now is Chrome and of course it's developer tools. If you do use desktop server, uh, I'm not gonna show that today, but the main thing that you need to know is that there is, and this is what the, the user interface looks like for what I assume is still the currently shipping version. Uh, I checked this just a couple of days ago. Yeah, well I mean, uh, this, is, this is if you have the free version. Uh, you'll just have these two. Uh, and so what you need to do to make debugging work from that side is just turn on the debug and trace plugin and uh, you know, restart it and you're good to go as far as that side goes. And we'll, and we'll cover what you need to do on the, uh, on the IDE side. And then there are also, for, uh, for people who are like, nah, I'm gonna run my own, homebrew. Or, uh, or whatever. Uh, you can get into your php.ini file and do some configuration directives. This is pretty much the kind of stuff that you would need. Um, I'm just gonna leave that in the slides and you, know, you can come back to that. Okay, so that is that. So let's go to Chrome. Oh yeah, I need to switch to the other tab. Okay, so here is a WordPress site. I think I might actually need to get out of full screen mode for this to make much sense. Okay, so I have a basic WordPress site, and I'm gonna see what I, need to, uh, what I need to show you here. Let's take a look at the stack. So here's MAMP. And the main thing that you need to be interested in if you're using MAMP is 
this here checkbox called Activate X Debug. This is something that uh, once they started building this in, uh, and once desktop servers started building in the debug and trace plugin, everybody's life got a ton better because this stuff used to be a real pain in the tuchus. Um, but now that you can just check this box and restart your servers, you have pretty much everything you need on the uh, on the server side, on your local developing server side, to uh, to get everything to get to get all that. So that's that. Just make sure that you have that turned on, or the debug and trace plugin in uh, ServerPress, or desktop server, I mean. And then over here is PHP Storm. So, oh, wait, one more thing. One more thing in the browser. So when you, uh, if you're in Chrome and you've installed that xdebug helper, um, that little uh, grayed out bug there in the, in the uh, address bar is where you toggle whether xdebug is going to be listened to by your browser. So I'm going to turn this on and set it to debug, and now the little bug is green. So we know that we are good to go. It's Pardon? It's an <laughs> I think it might, it, might be, it might be an aphid. It's a little big for an aphid, but hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Some aphids are big. OK, so now over here in PHP Storm, uh, one of the nice things about recent releases of this IDE in particular, and the reason that I think it's the cat's pajamas, is that they have uh, different ways of setting up a uh, of setting up your debugging sessions. So, I have, as you can see, my WordPress site imported here. All the stuff here is my plugins folder and all my themes and all that stuff. So, what you used to have to do, and what you still can do, is set up all all this kind of configuration saying, all right, here's my project. Here's my local web server where this thing is running, and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Now, uh, you, there's this thing called zero configuration debugging, which means that there's this little telephone icon up there in the toolbar, and it says, start listening for PHP debug connections. I click that button, and it's one, one complaint I have about this is that it is very subtle when it's turned on. But uh, I don't know if you can see that, but everything, let's see if I can, yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. So, uh, so this is green, and then when I when I click it again uh, to turn it off, it's just a little it's it's red there. So, that's uh, once you turn that on, and once you have this turned on, now they will listen to each other. Okay, so so what? I'm going to go into the run menu. This is where all the debugging stuff appears. And I'm going to say, break at first line in PHP scripts. So I've got that checked off now. So now, here's where the magic happens, if I did all this right. I go over to my WordPress site, and I reload it. And uh, nothing's happening. What's wrong? Oh my god, what's wrong? Oh. This, uh, this other panel appeared. My debugger is running. And WordPress has stopped. So right now, uh, PHP Storm has, and Xdebug have intercepted WordPress. And now what has happened is it's opened up the index.php file, and it's stopped at this highlighted line. Yeah, you can pretty much see that. Uh, is, this, is this at least somewhat legible? Yeah. All right, good. Um, so this line that is, that is highlighted is where PHP has stopped. So now, the world is my oyster. <laughs> I can see everything that's currently defined. And now, because I've stopped on the very first line, all I have are these PHP super globals. But down here in this debugger uh, tab, this is, this is where the magic happens. So I've got my, I've just, all I have is these super globals. It's, uh, you know, what, what's, what's up with that? That's because WordPress hasn't actually done anything yet. So now what we need to do is start walking through the code. So these buttons are just from left to right here. I have step over, step into, force step into, step out, and then run to cursor. So what this does, uh, step over is one you'll use a lot. And that means that whatever file is currently being displayed, where the, uh, basically where the highlighted line appears, you will skip to the next line, whatever that line is. So if there's a function there, it'll run the function and go to the next line. Uh, right now, this is just defining a constant, so whatever. But if I skip down here, you can see that now I have a highlighted blue variable here, which is my globals array. 
And somewhere in there, I, I guess it's, it's just ma made this appear. So now I have a require statement. So if I just step over this, what's going to happen? No. There we go. So we've, we, uh, we execute a bunch of other stuff and then end up in the WPDB file. And you can go through this. And basically, if you want to understand how WordPress works, this is how you can do it. You can step through every single little thing that it does. And you'll be there for weeks, probably. <laughs> um, the other IDE is also do the same thing. Yep, every IDE does this. Just uh, it's pretty much like the, the semantics of how all these things work are virtually identical. Uh, every IDE is going to have, it, sometimes the, the, the nomenclature will be slightly different, but it's, I mean, it's always step, and it'll be over, in, you know, out, things like that. Eclipse, Eclipse will definitely do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, once, once you start to become familiar with, with what each of these uh, stepping, uh, stepping functions is, you're going to be able to use it anywhere um, in any programming language, which is neat. So anyway, that's, uh, you can step through and, you know, yay, I'm stepping through and going line by line and skipping all the return statements. And boy, oh boy, aren't we opening a lot of files and doing a lot of stuff. Great. OK, so that's, that's well and good. And this is a great learning tool. But I'm just going to hit resume, the play button. And now, if I switch back to the browser, now the page is successfully loaded. So when you hit play, that means go. I'm done. I'm done looking. Just go until you hit another breakpoint. So all right, I said breakpoint. Let's look at how that actually works. So I'm going to close a bunch of these files. I'm going to take a drink. All right. So let's take a look. I'm going to collapse this. Here is a page template in my theme here, which is a 2015 child theme. And here is my functions.php file. Not much in there. I'm going to need those for a little later. OK, so let's try setting a breakpoint. Almost every debugger will do this in the same way as well. It's usually click in the gutter of the file somewhere where there's PHP. And then you get, in this case, it's a little pink dot. You can set as many of these as you want, as long as there is an actual executable line of PHP on there. I'm just going to set one, because it's all we really need right now. So the idea is that WordPress, the next time I reload that page, as long as the, the little telephone guy is turned on, and as long as my debug function is turned on over here, as long as those things are, are all set, the next time I reload the page, WordPress will execute until I hit this particular spot. So th what that means is, like this is in a particular page template, which is used on this page. So let's say I go to the home page. Let's, oh, right, I, I still have break on first line turned on. Let me turn that off. WordPress, there we go. OK, so uh, this time, nothing, nothing happened. The page loaded just as you would expect it to. But if I go to my, my page that I've set up that uses the, uh, that has a breakpoint set, not only does, uh, like, I didn't, I didn't touch anything that time. Uh, it got to the breakpoint, and it even switched to the app for me, which is kind of neat. So it shows me the breakpoint, and it, there's a little check mark in it now. And it highlights that line. So. Now I can do this whole stepping business. And you can see that there's a lot more stuff defined here. Lots and lots of stuff. Oh, so many things. But this is neat, because that means that when you're in a page template, you can find out what, basically what toys you have to play with. Um, it doesn't tell you all the functions that are available, but it does tell you all of the variables that you can look at and operate on. So I'm going to do a little stepping here. So I've gotten into a loop. And now I've got this function called get template part. So I've been doing step, o uh, step over, which will just go line by line and stay in this file. Step in will take me into the function definition and show me how it works. So I'm going to click step into. 
And now, if I scroll up a little bit, you can see I'm in this get template part function. Also, if you're using PHP Storm, wherever you are in the file, if you watch, if you watch this, so I scroll through and select other things, it shows you the context that your, that your cursor is in at any point in the file. All right, so I've scrolled down a little bit, and I forgot where I am. This button, it's called Show Execution Point. If I click that, it takes me back to wherever I am in the execution. And this, this will work if I switch to another file, or you know, if I'm whatever, whatever I'm doing. I can always click this and get to where my breakpoint, uh, where not my breakpoint is set, but where what line I'm at in terms of the execution. So now I can step through this, and, and if I want to see how uh, how get template part works, and try and figure out why uh, the template part that I'm trying to load isn't loading or whatever, this is a way that I can do that. So here, this function takes a couple of parameters, slug and name, which both appear here, and you can see that those are their values, which seems about right because that is what I passed in over here. So that's all good. And if I needed to debug this, I can see what this function does and find out where the breakdown happens. Everything's working at this point, uh, so I, I don't need to worry about it so much. But watch as I step through this. You can see this is a new feature, I think, in PHP Storm 9. This little, uh, this little thing up here is uh, and actually all of these things. This is called inline debugging. So I can see you know, what, what things were, uh, were defined on that line of code. And, and I can, it helps me see things that are changing in the context of the actual file. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, this is just visualizing what's happening. It's not changing your code. Um, but it's, it's a similar idea. So, and then all of the, uh, all the variables that change or that are defined anew um, on that particular line will appear in blue down here in the variables inspector. So you can step through the stuff and see all these things that are happening, and it's all super neat. The step out function will run until I get out of that function. So that if you, if you get down too many rabbit holes, you can click that to get yourself back to where you started. So I'm back here in my page template again. And I can step through, and uh, it's all it's all really totally interesting. Um, everybody loves page templates. Um, so here's a WP query line. Um, so on this page, I have my main loop, and I have another loop where I want to pull the latest post that appears uh, in a particular category. So I've got my WP query to do that for me. So let's take a look at that. I let that run, and now. So I'm inserting that into a variable called latest update, which appears here. Different debuggers will let you do things like sort the values that are displayed in here in alphabetical order. If I turn that off, I actually don't know what logic it uses to, uh, to make these appear. It might be something about uh, what order the variables were defined in or some, some other nonsense like that. But having them alphabetically is kind of nice. Makes it easier to find stuff. So go to latest update. And now I can inspect this to see just what a WP query instance variable looks like. So I can open this, and I can see all the different stuff that's defined in there and that I could use in my code. So you see you've got all these other classes down here, and it shows you the type of the variable if it's needed, or I, I should say the, uh, the class that, that a particular object is derived from. You can see that these are just simple arrays. So I can see that my WP query actually worked. I was asking for one post. I'm getting one post. Here it is in the posts array. And I verified that you know, what, I, what I thought was happening really is happening. You can step through. And, and then when you're done, just hit Run. And the page loads. So, uh, any questions to this point? Yes? Does it show how long the query took? It does not. Um, you can use other tools like uh, query monitor, the Query Monitor plugin can tell you that. Um, but this particular thing is only about the code, and especially when you're stepping through things uh, and you're basically stopping time, that, that kind of stuff is a, uh, 
I, I think there might actually be similar tools to this for checking out your SQL queries themselves. What you can do, um, if I, I'm going to set another breakpoint here and do this again. So I'm going to skip that first one and just run to the second one. There we go. So if you look at your, your query, which is called latest update, oh, except I need to actually let it run. So step over that. There we go. So you can find the actual query in here. No, that's not the one. There we go. It's called the request. So if I uh, right click this, I can copy its value and then I can paste that into my SQL uh, console and you know explain it and just look through uh, and see how long things took. The debugger itself won't do that for you. Okay. So we're back and, uh, and the page works. So let's look at something where we're actually trying to fix uh, a possible problem. Okay, so here in my functions.php file, also in my template, oh, one more thing, I'm going to clear all those breakpoints. So here in the uh, debugger tab, I can view all breakpoints. So this will show me everything that I've currently defined, and I can turn them off instead of having to go into the file and find them and delete them or whatever. You can, you can delete them or just, this is called muting them. So now when I re-execute this file, it won't stop at those points. So I've got my uh, my in queue scripts action that I'm that I'm hooking into, and I'm going to include jQuery UI. That's that's my intention. I want to use that in some other scripts that I've written, and for some reason it's not working. Um, so just to just to prove that out, let me go to the home page. This is probably gonna. I think this is going to the wrong thing. Let's, uh, let's just reload something. Yeah, it's trying to go to the wrong place. There we go. All right, so if I look at the source and I search for jQuery. There's no jQuery UI. All right, so I'm real mad about that because it looks like I did everything right. What's wrong? So I'm going to drop in here. I'm going to insert a breakpoint and run it again and see what's going on. So I reload, and I get right to this spot. So I'm going to step into the function and see what happened. So all right, I'm passing in this handle jQuery UI. That, that looks fine. I'm just going to step through. I love getting into some of these functions and seeing that there's a function in WordPress called WP scripts may be doing it wrong. <laughs> that amuses me. So. I'm stepping through here, and this is stuff I don't care about. Oh, okay, so here's here's an enqueue method. So all right, I'm trying to enqueue the built-in jQuery UI scripts. What's going on? I'm going to step into that now to see what's happening there. All right, so now I got a for each, and it's got some stuff. I got uh, I don't care about any of this. What's 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 the deal? All right, so I have. Some, what do we got here? I'm, I'm checking to see if a handle is, is in my queue. All right, whatever. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what time is it? <laughs> I am the only thing that's standing between you and lunch. All right, so the point is that, uh, yeah, we, I, I got to wrap this up. So what you could do is that eventually you would find out uh, if you step to the right place. That, that this is not a defined handle in WordPress. There's a list of handles that you can look at in the debugger, and you would find out that the real one is, WP, uh, is a jQuery UI core. Um, and then you, you could uh, go back and include that and fix everything up. But uh, I'm just going to rush back to, oh, I'm going to let this guy, I'm going to stop this dude, go back here. So the next things that you might want to look at once you start to get a handle on this stuff is looking at version control to uh, help you keep control of your stuff over time. 
You can do remote debugging using Xdebug or other tools on a development server. It doesn't have to be local, so you can check that out. And then you can look at testing frameworks to help you get a handle on other things that might be going wrong in your code, things like Behat and Make and that kind of stuff. So uh, if you have questions, comments, answers, or problems, as my uh, seventh grade foreign language teacher used to say, I will be at the happiness bar uh, after this, and we can talk about that. Uh, I'll also be here for a little bit. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>